Not us. We're still here. <laughs> now, we talk a lot about oil on the program. We talk about the highs, the lows. We've already done it on the program today. But what about gas? Well, one of the world's oldest private gas and oil exploration firms in the Middle East is Crescent Petroleum. It was set up in 1971 in the United Arab Emirates. While its first wells were for oil, it was an early adopter of natural gas. Well, it signed its first gas supply contract in 1985, but its total now exceeds 125,000 barrels of oil equivalent every single day. And it's looking to expand into both northern Africa and Iraq. Its gas deliveries already help to provide electricity for 4 million people in northern Iraq. Well, we have the man in charge with us in the studio, Majid Jafar, who's chief executive of Crescent Petroleum. Welcome to Business Live. Thank you. Nice to see you. Now... You've met before, haven't you? I have, you yeah, when I was based out in Dubai uh, with BBC. our other programme, uh, Middle East Business Report. And it's interesting, I remember, I think we talked then at the time about this push elsewhere, because everyone imagines the Gulf, the place of oil and gas. But it's not only about exploring and extracting, but it's then making it useful, clearly. So expansion, as we said, into North Africa, into parts of Iraq. And Iraq is the interesting one, the one that's got all of its oil and gas itself. But the difficulty, and clearly after the war, is getting it out of the ground. It's investment in infrastructure. How do you play a part in that? So as companies from the region, uh, we, we take a different look at, at the risks. We take a long-term view, and we try and differentiate ourselves on understanding what the real local market needs are mm. and trying to address them rather than just focusing on export. And by being nimble, by partnering well with companies with, uh, from the outside and also delivering on projects cost-effectively, uh, and, and time, which is obviously uh, key. And our region as a whole has half the world's oil and gas, but less than a third of, its, of the world's oil production and less than a sixth of the world's gas production. So we're still punching way below our weight. When you talk about the region, um, it was described to me once that UAE is a really safe street in a really dodgy neighbourhood. Um, and, and it's sort of a decent analogy in terms of the unpredictability and the unrest in many parts of the region. Um, when you talk about that long-term view of investment, how do you do it in, in a region that is, is notoriously unpredictable? Yeah, so clearly, you know, our problems aren't below the ground in, in, in the oil and gas sector in the region. We've got the lowest cost of production that's above the ground. You mentioned earlier on the program budget issues, but we've got in some countries wars, uh, instability, um, payment issues or, or, or respect for contract, fiscal terms, uh, and then overall policy. There are many countries in the region where there's a national oil company with a monopoly and little room for the private sector, though that is starting to change now. Something else as well that you really want to see change is, is social and economic development uh, within uh, the Arab world, as it were, and you're doing a lot of work with, with y young people in particular and the issue of youth unemployment, which is the highest in the region, isn't it, worldwide? So, you know, our, our biggest natural resource is our young population, not the oil and gas. Uh, in fact, oil and gas employs percentage-wise less and less because it's becoming more and more high-tech. We need to create 100 million jobs over the next two decades across the Middle East, North Africa. We've got 30%, which is the highest average as a region, youth unemployment. Uh, and we need better, pr more private sector investment and education and skills that match the needs of the private sector because the governments just can't keep employing the young people anymore. And also female empowerment is very important to you as well. You've got two daughters, age one and three, yeah. and that's something you want to see a real shift in. Absolutely, and it's critical not just as a moral issue but as an economic and a social issue. If we've got the lowest female uh, empowerment, again, across the world, that's half our population not in the workforce, and it also leads to higher birth rates, which means we can't catch up with the employment issue. You have just sort of intertwined nearly everything we've talked about in our program yep. today. Majid, thanks for coming in. We'd love to talk to you for longer, but unfortunately we haven't got the time in this program. But there's and so many issues coming up there. And also, uh, beautifully <laughs> preempted our next story as well, because you talk about birth rates. Uh, today on the program we're looking at the business of birth. We're going to have a series across the week, and we're going to start in Turkey today, because 